All right. I don't want to keep repeating myself, and I probably won't return to this subject, but for my next little podcast, I'd like to pull, uh, talk about some of the things that arose from September the 7th, the mass arrests and so forth. Some of the things that I probably didn't get to mention or emphasize too much. So as we know, uh, nearly 300 people were arrested for nothing, and uh, there's still nothing about it in the media, anywhere really. It's almost as though there's been some sort of blackout. Now, we don't have to be paranoid to know that these things do happen, but uh, given, our, given our media, such a cringy, cruelly media that are too busy reporting royal babies and sort of worshipping at the shrine of the politicians and so on, uh, then they have ignored it. It's, it's a, it was a good story. 300 people arrested for doing nothing. Detained. Arrested. Kettled. Deposited in uh, remote police stations on the edge of London. Stringent bail conditions. Uh, denied facilities in the police station. I was speaking to some women. They were arrested. They weren't even allowed to go to the toilet. The excuse being, oh, there's no women police constables available to escort you to the toilet. So you have to uh, urinate in this bucket here. You know, this to a 50-year-old woman. I hope you're 50. I, uh <laughs> And not, and not younger, but I uh, don't want to insult you or anything. But, I, uh, but anyway, yeah, I'm uh, rambling here. So all this has happened without basically a word in the media, just a two-page spread in the local paper and a few sort of news things on the local news as it happened on the day. But after that, nothing. Nothing at all. But there's some things that have uh, come out since, and I'm not talking about just people not being allowed to uh, go to the toilet in the police. Uh, you know. I'm talking about the insidious role of the Unite Against Fascism that organised the counter demonstration, and particularly its leader, Wayman Bennett, or whatever, Wayman Bennett. And there's been a big cover up here. Obviously, Unite Against Fascism did have intensive uh, negotiations with the police prior to the event. I'm not condemning them for that. That's where they're at. And, you know, that's, that is what to be expected. After all, they don't want to cause any ructions, do they? They don't want any trouble on the streets. They don't want anything to go out of control, just like the police. Perhaps because if there was things went out of control, it would reflect rather badly on the left, and the Labour Party might get the blame. And for every car that was set on fire, maybe that's another hundred and fifty thousand votes of Conservatives in the next election. This is the way these people think. So it's better to put the lid on everything and uh, claim a victory. But what I'm saying about Wayman Bennett, and I don't know about the, but he's the leader. He's the one that should take the can. Is I happen to know from information that I cannot tell divulge, but it'll all come out anyway in the media, or the alternative media, at least I hope it will, that on the day itself, the police told Mr. Bennett that if anybody left the park in a group to go and confront the EDL, they would be participating in an illegal demonstration and so therefore be subjected to arrest under some law that they've just brought out, Section 12 or Section 14, who knows. But they would be subjected to arrest, to arrest and that they had the manpower to do it. Remember, there was 3,000 police on duty that day. 3,000. Well, first of all, Mr. Bennett and Unite Against Fascism, although they had a loudspeaker system which nearly dulled the senses completely in the park, and 48 speakers did not mention this over the system. Did not say, the police have told me if anybody has an illegal demonstration that they will be killed and arrested, blah, blah. Chose not to say it, which as far as I'm concerned, is, is, it's not even complicity with the police because the police warned him. They told him, but he said, he or, or he did not say, and he did not warn us. If we'd have been warned, would we have gone off and done it? We probably would. But we weren't presented with a choice. And also as well, when nearly 300 people were surrounded by the police, some of them arrested quite brutally, surrounded by the police after doing nothing, 
killed, including lots of local kids. Not one mention of this was made in the park. Not one mention was made over the loudspeaker system of this event occurring just a few hundred yards away from where the main demonstration was, the static demonstration in Altib Ali Park. So there we have it again. And then they had a little march to the mosque of about 100 yards and proclaimed it a great victory, whilst at the same time ignoring the plight of the people that had been arrested. So I would say to anybody in Unite Against Fascism, particularly in London, this is just my personal view. It's not the pers uh, view of other people I know or work with. This is my personal view. Is there a Unite Against Fascism? It's a waste of time. It does not unite anybody against fascism. It does not confront fascism on the streets. Leave. Join grassroots movements. Start something else. Do anything but hang around and unite against fascism. It's just a cash cow. They get loads of money from the trade unions and they do nothing. And they also obviously collaborate with the police. As they have collaborated with the police and isolated militant people that actually wanted to do something in uh, other towns, such as Newcastle. So leave the UAE. Who, who cares if it collapses? It's useless anyway. It's moribund. It doesn't actually do anything except not fight fascism. Unite against not fighting fascism should be its, its correct title. And we all know as well that Unite Against Fascism is but a child of the Socialist Workers' Party, which is, at the moment, disintegrating, although like cancer, and that's what these things are, like cancer to the body politic, they won't go away. They keep re-emerging in other parts of the body. I know, I've had cancer myself, and uh, somebody I know has just died of cancer this morning. I know what a terrible disease cancer is. I'm not saying this flippantly, and I would compare the left, the Socialist Workers Party in particular, and Unite Against Fascism, as a being like a cancer. They're nothing more than pimps, pimping for the Labour Party in the next election. We don't need them, away with them. I'd rather let the uh, EDL march through the streets without opposing them falsely, like this. If they were allowed to march through the streets, if the UAF didn't call the demonstration, maybe we could then get closer to them and have a go at them and uh, disperse them and make sure that they never come back again. Neither me or anybody else around here wants to go through the sort of crap that we went through last Saturday and hear it proclaimed as a victory. But there's something else as well. I've had this through the post. Or through the letterbox. Witness appeal. The Metropolitan Police are saying on Saturday, the 7th of September, two opposing demonstrations were held in the areas of Allgate and Whitechapel Road. These demonstrations were largely peaceful. Between 1 pm and 2 pm, there was some disorder in nearby streets, including New Road, Cannon Street Road, Alder Street, Commercial Road, Back Church Lane, Cable Street, Royal Mead Street, East Smithfield. This resulted in the arrest of a number of people. Did you witness this disorder? Were you affected by this disorder? The Metropolitan Police is committed to ensuring the streets of London are safe and we need your help to do this. If you have any information that will help us with our investigation into the disorder, please contact us. Well, I have some information and that is there was no disorder. Yes, there was people on the streets and people running through the streets, but there wasn't a single window smashed. There was no car set on fire or turned over or damaged. There was no bins put across the uh, the road as barricades. Uh, there was no police injured. Usually when there is a confrontation with the police, people and police get injured, but there was no reported police injuries. So therefore, where is the disorder? What is all this about? It's all about control. They want to control us. They want the police to decide where and when we assemble on the streets and what we do and so on. And groups like the UAF are going along with it. You'll be here, you go there, you don't go here, you don't go there. What's the point in having a demonstration? What's the point of being out on the streets if you can't go where you want to go, do what you want to do, meet people you want to meet and even confront people that you want to confront? Where's the freedom in that? If this was happening in Russia, it'd be headlines. If it was happening in Moscow, it'd be outrage. If it happens here, total silence. And I don't have a go at the right-wing press and so on for the total silence. I have a go at the liberals and the lefties for that almost 
death and in silence. As for the people that are arrested, I don't think that any of them will be charged. Maybe one or two might be charged with assault or something like that, or uh, something like that. But the vast majority of them will be discharged, and that's it. I say that they should sue the police for every penny they get. Every penny that they can get. That's the only way to stop them. Judicial reviews, houses of lords, inquiries, I mean, it's a waste of time. Sue them. It's the only thing that they understand. Some heads will roll for that. So why are, they do, why are the police doing this? I can only say because I think that they're preparing for the future that lays ahead, the future crash that is going to come, you know, when we're faced in a situation like Greece or something, or Italy or Spain or Brazil, or any, any other country you care to name, that they will have at their disposal all the means of repression and the law and uh, so on and the synchronization. I noticed as well another thing that they had a long, brand new long riot shields. They were obviously expecting bricks and petrol bombs to be thrown at them because long riot shields can only be used for defensive reasons, uh, not offensive reasons like little round shields are. But this never happened. So I ask the question again, where was the disorder? It's all been made up. It's kind of weird because if they were running a big campaign against a non-existent disorder being in papers, but it hasn't been mentioned in the papers, it's just here through the letterbox that we get it. Um, what else can I say? Well, nothing much. This is an ongoing situation. I'd just like to talk a little bit about the Doreen Lawrence uh, affair. As you know, the uh, campaign uh, was infiltrated by the police. Um, I think what they were trying to prove was a, it was a gang killing, the Lawrence killing, you know, a gang of whites fighting against a gang of blacks or something, you know, it was a gang thing, so therefore these things happen all the time, so it wasn't really a racial thing, it was a gang thing, I think this is what the police were trying to establish. But Doreen Lawrence and her, and her husband, I can't remember his name, they put up a stout fight where millions would have gone down, they carried on and on and on until they got some kind of justice. But what's happened? Doreen Lawrence is now Baroness Lawrence, or going to become Baroness Lawrence. And she's going to be like elevated to the House of Lords. What, you know, Doreen, why did you do it? They screwed you over, they screwed over loads of people. Just look at the Hillsborough thing, another 240 statements of witnesses have just discovered to be doctored. There's going to be a hell of a lot more stuff uh, revealed about um, the uh, Stephen Lawrence campaign, the police infiltration of it and so forth. And yet, you accept this bauble, this meaningless position as a member of the establishment, because that's what they do. They buy you off. They buy, they buy people off. And uh, everything that you've done and everything that you've said and your struggle for justice as all now completely meaningless as far as a lot of people are concerned and I find it really sad really sad indeed but if the police are going to stop us from protesting next time they do something they know what to expect and I'm not talking about an EDL march the Mark Duggan thing's currently in court at the moment I can't say anything about it because there hasn't been a verdict obviously be a whitewash but you remember People can take just so much. And remember what happened when uh, Mark Duggan was shot by the police. And there's a reaction, not so much to the shooting of Mark Duggan, but the treatment of his family outside the police station sparked off three days of serious rioting with fatalities, tens of millions of pounds worth of uh, damage, shops burnt down, houses burnt down and so on. If people are not allowed to demonstrate like they are in other countries then this is what's going to happen. And so therefore, the system is building up basically a huge explosion if it doesn't allow people to demonstrate, albeit rowdily and so on. And I can say that on the September 7th, there was no rowdiness. There was no violence. There was no damage. Right? People went where they weren't supposed to go, which was in the streets which is our domain. If people are not allowed to be in the streets, where where can they be? All right, then. That's all i got to say on September the 7th for the moment. 
as I say, um, it's an ongoing situation. I really hope that Wayman Bennett is exposed for what he's done or not done. And I hope that the UAF really does collapse because it's a complete and absolute waste of time. And I'd like to see grassroots anti-fascist groups growing up in every town. And I know that the UAF is the only, uh, the only thing in some towns, but people have got to go beyond that. As for the UAF in London, I regard it as utterly useless and corrupt. And nothing more than a cheerleader for the utterly useless and corrupt Labour Party, which is having its conference at the moment. So um, I feel rather tired. I've been suffering from insomnia. I haven't been managed to sleep, but I think like uh, half an hour of that on the television would be enough to give me the best sleep I've had for a while. All right, then. That's it for now. Next time, I don't know what I'll talk about, but I'm going to try and branch out into some new subjects. All right, then. Bye.